black creators are going viral. It was not supposed to happen on purpose. And one house in ATL is staking its claim in the influencer game. Take a hit for the grandma, oh, The collab crib. Get ready for an exclusive tour of the home. We're the girls of Collab Crib. With actress Queen Kamira. I've been doing social media for like a very long time. I'm in like Dub Smash, TikTok, YouTube, Instagram. Kaylin Castle, a singer from Bermuda. I want to double and dabble in like, you know, fashion. And dancer slash actress Kayshell Dabney from Baltimore, Maryland. I want to be in movies, I want to be in TV series and stuff like that. Everybody always want to know what we got going on in our new crib. Hey, E.T. It's the ladies of the Collab Crib, and today we're bringing you into our world as black creators on TikTok. Kaylin, Kayshell, and Kamira. Hey, ladies, y'all looking good. Thank you. Thank you. It's looking like a girl group over here. All right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so we know you are creators who are part of the collab crib, but tell us about yourselves individually. We'll start with you, Kayshell. What are your Me. dreams? What are your hopes? I want to be in movies. I want to be in TV. I want to be like in like TV series and stuff like that. But yeah, I do TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. So like the whole social media thing. I ain't never seen two pretty <laughs> best friends. Thanks. Who ugly? It's a video. You ain't never seen a video before? No, because you over be here talking about some facts. Who ugly? <laughs> it ain't me. It ain't me. Wow. So I'm the ugly friend. Y'all think I'm the ugly friend? Okay. Yo, I ain't say that. She said what? that. I didn't even say that. But stop playing my friend like that. All right. I'm an artist full time. Yeah, the social media was just something I kind of just jumped into because it's 2021, you know, like you have to, everyone has to be on social media at this point to get the music across. Hey, Theo, you hear that, bro? I should hear that. All right. Yeah, I want to double and dabble in like, you know, fashion or I mean, maybe you might catch me acting a little bit or something, but the yeah. most part is the music. All right, Kamara, tell us a little bit about yourself and your hopes and dreams. I want to be an actress for sure, like Disney, Nickelodeon, Tyler Perry, like all yeah. the <laughs> yeah. yeah. Girl, that Tyler Perry needs to happen right now. You're in Atlanta. No. I can see it. <laughs> I can see it too. Yeah. And she has 14, so. I know, you're the baby of the group. How was that? Um, It's good. Yeah. She works, she doesn't work like she's younger than us. Right, she works, she just works like the us. same. Not the banger, the banger. Other than the fact that you're black creators inside one house, what do you think sets you apart from the other houses on the West Coast, like the Sway House and the Hype House? What makes you different? More so our energy. I know it's hard to separate the fact that we're black, but you know, black people, we have to work a little harder for everything. So we already know that we're not being set to the same benchmarks and standards and most, as most of these other houses are on the West Coast or whatever, mostly because we're coming in at a disadvantage and right. we're already under, being underpaid, being, you know, being undertreated as yeah. creators. So I think it's just our work ethic as Black creators. So that being said, Kishel, do you feel like there's any pressure to live up to the success of the other houses? Or do you, just, um, do you guys just do you? I feel like most of the most of us here, we do us because like if you're focused on the next person, then you can't really like be as successful as you want to be. But I mean, sometimes you know you do you know you do look a little bit. But for the main part, <laughs> we just focus on us and just make sure that we have everything we need to be successful over here. Well, Kamira, being a content creator, it seems like a full time job. Hats off to you three. What keeps you motivated to keep the content coming? It's really just like where I want to be in life. Like it's always been my dream to do this. Like, and my mom always told me to follow my dreams. So mm -hmm. it, it, it's a full time job, um, I'm going to admit. Um, but I mean, if it's really what you want to do, you just got to be like, have the drive for it. Well, what are some of the issues as black creators on TikTok do you feel that needs to be addressed on the platform? She can start. Oh, she can start. Uh, yes. 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 I'm actually dealing with one. Um, right. My, my page was actually, it said banned. 
for some reason, and like before it was banned, like all of my videos that I was trying to post, it just kept getting like flagged, like kept getting taken down since community guidelines. And I wasn't really doing anything. Like, hey, Shell had posted the same video on her page. I had the same exact video on my page in the state. So I don't, I'm so confused, <laughs> I don't get it. Have you received any answers? They said that it's something about my age. They say that I gotta be on the 13 and under. App, but I'm actually 14, so it doesn't really make sense. They said that I can't get my face back. So. And just for everyone watching, this is an issue that a number of Black creators have been facing recently. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so how are you moving forward with this, Kamara? Um, I'm just going to have to start from the bottom up again. Just going to have to. I created me a new page. No, are you serious? Yes. Like I had just hit like 400k, and it took me years to get there. But now, you know what I'm saying? All I can do is just pray and just work. Is there a way that they can reactivate it? Or is there's there a way, but- There's a way, but they say they, they, they can't do yeah, it. Yeah, they're issues. Girl, sometimes some setbacks are setting you up. So for, for better things. Yeah. That's wild. That's, that's wild. All right, well, let's talk about the appropriation of Black culture on TikTok. Jalea Harmon, she created The Renegade, right? But Charlie D'Amelio got most of the credit for it. So as Black creators on the platform, you are obviously working very hard. And as you said, you might not get the same shine as houses on the West Coast. How do you process that and keep going? I feel as if, I, okay, I do understand that Black creators are trendsetters for a lot of you know, the content that is being produced on TikTok. But at the same time, there's a way to involve yourself in someone's culture without it becoming cultural appropriation. Mm -hmm. So how to necessarily address it, it's, I honestly couldn't give you an answer. Mostly it's kind of just like, you want people to appreciate us, but yeah. at the same time, it's a fine, I think it's more in the educational background where they have to educate themselves before they can in, like, you know, be involved. Yeah. It's definitely really frustrating. I can't sit here and say it's not. Sometimes it does mess with your mental cause you're like, well, dang, like, cause you're trying so hard and you're doing exactly the same thing as other people. But for some reason, it seems like you're being targeted or you're being like hated or something like that, you know? But I mean, the most we can do, you can't sit there and you can't like, you know, dwell on the situation. You can't like beat yourself up because you won't get anywhere. So even though it sucks, the most we can do is just work harder. So yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Or they need to come with that same energy that they come with for us. Like they take our stuff down. In it. Right. Yes. yes. Immediately. Awesome. And also, the energy. <laughs> and also the algorithm issues. Have you all heard of that? Oh my gosh. We're yes. experiencing it yes. right, right now. now. Tell us. Okay, so this this is about awareness too. You know, the more people that know, the more action hopefully will be taken. So tell us your thoughts on that and what's going on there. Yeah. Okay, so recently uh, I posted a video and it was at zero views for like over an hour. So I posted the same video again. It was at zero views for an hour and I posted it again, zero views. So then I made a video basically explaining like, I have 1.4 million followers, why is it? And it didn't say that they violated community guidelines. So I'm like, what is the issue? If you're gonna do this, at least explain to me what the problem is so that I would be able to fix it. So I made a video basically explaining how I felt like it was unfair that I didn't have the opportunity to show my content, zero views. So I posted another video and was like, well, hey, you guys just go to my Instagram so you can see the video, zero views. I don't understand what the issue is, but, and it's like, if we're gonna get like strike for our community guidelines, at least have, like, at least be able to tell us what we're doing wrong, you know? Yeah. Don't just take it down. Like, it's like um, scolding the child and not telling them what they did wrong. They're not gonna right. do it. So TikTok has not reached out to you about that as creators, no. And is this something, like, if you're to be honest, do you think that this is just something black creators are dealing with? Um, I would say it's hard to say to just pinpoint it at black creators, but to a certain extent, I, when we experience it, it's like we all understand because we've all been in that spot. Yeah. But talking to creators that aren't black, it don't seem like. I can say that it does. I would say what happens to everybody, but I feel like the black community gets it the worst. Yeah. Like, honestly. For sure. Yeah. There's research that people have done to back that up too, so. Yeah. yeah. That's a lot to take in. But on a positive note, Kamira, let's talk about some of your favorite Black creators who are on the platform who you might feel like don't get enough shine. 
One of them will be for sure K Shell. Really? Aww. <laughs> That's cute. What do you want your fans and followers to take away from your content? Um, I want them to know that it's okay to speak up for yourself. If you feel some type of way, say what you gotta say. <laughs> you okay. Know? <laughs> yeah, I want, honestly, I just want people to feel inspired because I came a long way to get where I am, like mm -hmm. physically and mentally. So if I can make someone smile for two minutes out of the day, I've done my job. Yeah. That's yeah. Um, it's kind of the same thing what Kaylin uh, said. It's like, you just want them to feel inspired. You want them to feel good about themselves. Some people want it all, but I don't want nothing at all. Everybody always want to know what we got going on in our new crib. You excited? Don't be shy. I want it through this door. Let's just get into it. Here. We might get a pool, have a nice little pool party. From here, you can see the back of the house. And this is what it looks like. Okay. I think you should wash the dishes. I feel like you should wash the dishes. I feel like she should wash the dishes. I feel like I like always wash the dishes. I can't talk right now. I'm doing hot girl shit. Up here, we have a little balcony to a room that we have. I think that's a nice feature. This is Kamara's girl cave, where yeah, she this edits girl and stuff. Cave. So we already have like just a little couch, you know what I'm saying, a little TV. I'm trying to get it put up on the wall at this moment. But this is where I just sit here, edit, come up with content, and just slow on. These are our beds. This is my side. That's my side. This is Chico. Yeah, that's Chico. He be chilling. So over here is where we edit, and I be like, Hey friend. Oh, hey friend. What's your evidence? Um, uh, a prank. Oh, y'all thought uh, this is a prank, huh? Okay. <laughs> oh, we have double sinks. This is Kaylin's side. This is my side. And then we have a tub. Like I said, everyone doesn't have a shower, but the tub is nice. If you get to the place, it's like, hey, the jet's in it. So it's like a little jacuzzi. So don't be in our beach. Um, but I feel like we need a little girl's touch to the house. For sure. Mm -hmm. Like a little glitter wall? A little glitter wall. Yeah, Maybe a wall without faces on it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I think I should come back when we have a fully furnished house to work. Fully oh, furnished. They should. Yeah. Oh my God. You gotta come back. Gotta come but back. in the meantime, thank you for the entertainment tonight. Thank you. It was nice having you. But you gotta go now. See you later. Bye. Hey, E.T. It's the ladies of the collab crib, and today we're going to be reacting to some of our best TikToks. We're about to take a look at your first TikTok. We'll start with you, Kamira. You look like you feel awkward watching the video. What, what thoughts are going through your head right now? Um, I look super young. At that time, I was like 11, like, I think I was like 12. I was very young. I look very young. Who came up with the idea to pull you out of frame like that? Um, <laughs> me, I seen the challenge going around and I was like, you know what? Just might as well just hop on it. Yeah, so you've been doing this thing since you were 11, girl. Yeah, well, I eventually, I started out modeling, but I got into like other things. Just started doing yeah. skin. Yeah. Is it ever hard for you, you all to watch back your content? The way Myra was over here squirming. Yeah, <laughs> it yeah. is. Yes. yes, it'd be cringy. Well, let's look at yours, Kaylin. What are you doing? Act normal. It is a normal. This is a video or? This is a boomerang. I was boomeranging myself and shit. <laughs> it's 
is this man? Who That's Byron. Byron, was he your boyfriend? Or is um, yeah, he was. <laughs> oh, okay. So what went down? Yeah, like we used to do, I used to sing and he would rap in videos. He wasn't good at it, but I was good. So they kind of, <laughs> we used to just go viral all the time. And I love that. Do you guys still talk or no? Yeah, we're still, we're still like best friends. All right, Keisha, let's move on to yours. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> sure. Where? Who? You been where? Where who? Mm, for real. Okay, Miss Actress, you definitely gave us the acting chops here. When I first got on TikTok and I seen the audio, I kept seeing people just doing the regular stuff. And I'm like, nah, I like to be different. So I'm like, let me act this out. Cause I, when I heard it, I imagined like my mother, you know, beating me when I come in the house. <laughs> so I was like- That's happened to you out. before? <laughs> Huh? Was this from experience? Yes, from experience. <laughs> and I actually had my cousin on the couch watching me. He didn't know what I was doing. He was like, because I kept getting up and changing outfits, kept changing my outfits. He was like, what are you doing? And after, I was like, watch my TikTok, watch my TikTok. Yeah. OK, well, let's move on to the top five performing videos of right. the collab, Chris. Yeah, that's the first one. Oh, I see me. Yeah. You wish that was you, huh? <laughs> Okay, this is something that I feel like the black community definitely, this is like something that happens in our in our household. Who was the little boy that Robbie was speaking to? Um, his name is Bad Kid uh, Super Marcus. And um, he Keith had actually brought him over, our manager. And um, Rob had came up, Robbie World, he came up with the idea. He was like, yo, this would be amazing if we do this. He was like, all I need you is ride around the hoverboard and <laughs> He'll take care of the rest. So then it's just like, I love that. And Robbie is hilarious. Yes. Oh, yeah. Love yeah. Robbie's a genius. All right, y'all. So the girls are at it again. Back at it again. We are finna do a slip and slide. Slip and slide on the boy. We need more. 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 <laughs> First of all, I felt my mom come through me because first thing I heard, somebody's gonna bust their head on that floor. I was like, oh my, they're not afraid somebody's gonna slip and fall and hurt themselves. Then, uh, that um, was the point, kind of. We kind of <laughs> were because like we were like, as you heard in the video, we were kind of nervous for our manager Keith to walk. Yeah, in. okay, yeah, yes, we yes. were scared for him to yeah. come in. And the barber. There was oh a yeah, there was a barber here. So he was oh like, my goodness. goodness. Yeah, yeah. So that was Trey Shoes, by the way. Yeah, those were Trey Shoes. It was Trey Shoes. Oh, way. that you were sliding. I didn't down. want to get my messed up, so I used trays. What was their reaction after they kind of figured out what was going on? I think they wanted to get us big. We yeah. still waiting. We, we still waiting. We've been waiting for pranks. Like, We've waiting forever. They haven't really did anything. <sighs> Y'all are good with these prank words. Was that something you already saw on TikTok? Oh, oh yeah, it was Kamara. Yeah. Um, I just came up with it, like, because I've always wanted a slip and slide. Even though it's winter, <laughs> like, it's kind of cold outside, so, like, we can't really do it outside. So we was like, you know what? Let's do it indoors. <laughs> On a marble floor, girl. I was like, I'm getting too old because my mom definitely just came out of me. Anybody on? <laughs> oh, everybody's coming on. And the boys left their door open, so. <laughs> that has such a funny backstory. Yes, that has a very funny backstory. I love it. Story. Okay, I so. Um, after all the pranks we did on the boys, the boys thought it would be funny to take our door off the hinges, completely off the hinges and hide our door. They like, they took the they door took off. the whole door. The whole door off. So after the prank, we said, hey, you guys, can you put our door back? And they tried to put it back, but they didn't put it back right. So it wasn't shutting correctly. And they they lost some screws. And they, they lost like, the screws. Lost the screws. And told us that we had to go buy our own. Right. So what we did was took their screws out their, their door doors. to replace our door. Yep. Okay. <laughs> that <laughs> makes a lot of sense because I was like, okay, so what did she do when she found out the doors were open? And then we see her unscrewing. So <laughs> are they are they missing screws now? Is yes. That yes. Yes. The yes. door is hanging. <laughs> hanging. They still I haven't been hanging. Screws. It feels really good to just see all that melanin and all these black creators like supporting one another and just in one space killing it. 
Did you guys, guys just want to come out and introduce yourself? So that was actually Valid and Kalev. So Valid is another um, Kalev house that our manager also manages in Atlanta, another black creator house. And okay. uh, we were actually headed to the polls. To the polls, because we did, um, yeah, so we worked alongside Joy to the Pearls to support John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock. So yeah, so pretty much we joined along the whole election, the Senate election, and we were a part of the campaign. Yeah, we worked hard. We, yeah, worked, we, definitely we worked hard for them votes, okay, we honey? Worked. Well, what's the energy like with having all of you guys together? How does that feel? Genuine. Yeah. I can say that, <laughs> which is a good yeah. feeling. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's good to genuinely be around Black people that want to see other Black people win, but also want to work hard. 